Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm tearing apart an external hard drive so I can show you what's on the inside and take a closer look at some of the parts that we can use in future projects. Magnets, motors, and more can be found on the inside of a hard drive, but do keep in mind that if you take one apart, pretty much need to plan on not using it as a hard drive again because you run a very good risk of destroying it. The first few steps are rather benign, like getting the exterior case off of the hard drive itself. We're gonna continue to kind of pull some things apart here, and that still leaves the working components on the inside fully intact and capable of operating. There is a point at which we get to the point of no return and I'm gonna point that out when we get there. You'll see we've quickly gotten ourselves to the point where we have a couple of exposed PCBs. That means we're already running the risk of damaging something, especially since you know, I'm not wearing an electrostatic wrist guard, which I would do if this was something I was going to keep and try to keep working. You'll notice we've got the protective case parts out of the way, and now I'm moving on to the drive lid itself. We're down to the last couple of steps where there's actually something protecting the platters on the inside where the data is stored. The second PCB has some very important chips in it, including the microcontroller unit, which has the central processing unit incorporated, as well as the memory chip and the voice coil motor controller chip that's in here as well. And then there's a flash chip that stores the drive's firmware. We have definitely now reached the point of absolute no return. We're getting down to getting the label off the back and taking this last screw out and pulling this up exposes the platters. Those platters are very sensitive to dust, dirt, and everything else. And once you have them exposed, you run a great risk of making sure they won't work again. And just to avoid all my own warnings, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take everything out of here. But like I said at the beginning, I don't plan on putting this thing back together to make it work again. I'm stripping it for parts to use in other projects. This part just to the side of the platters is called the head stack assembly. And that actually has two plates over the voice coil that have neodymium magnets attached to them. That's because the combination of the coil itself and the magnets works as an electromagnet that controls how all the read-write activity takes place. This is actually held in place with one screw that's through a bearing joint in that particular arm. Once we start getting all of this apart, all the individual pieces come out and we can see how neat some of this stuff really looks. Each of the platters that stores the memory in this gets two read-write heads. One floats above and one floats below the disc so that it can write to both sides simultaneously. You'll notice here I'm pulling off stickers off the back of these. Each of them lets you know that once you've removed these stickers, you've shot your warranty. Now comes the tricky part, getting the platters out. I'm actually not going to shatter them out of here, but I'm going to use this pick device to hold the spindle steady so that I can actually remove the screw in the middle. This will free up the cap on top and allow us to get the actual discs out of here. These platters have been polished to an amazing precision level to the point where they actually are amazing mirrors. They're going to be great for other projects, including refractive components for light projects. Neodymium magnets that I mentioned that were inside the actuator itself are actually attached to these brackets. They're hard to get off of here. In fact, getting them off of there actually results in breaking the magnet for the most part almost nine times out of ten. So be careful about that. I actually am just going to leave them attached to the metal to use for purposes in the future that I have yet to decide. As you can see, there's a lot of really cool stuff on the inside of a hard drive, and several of these are quite easy to figure out what you might want to do with for some projects. As I mentioned, the platters can be fun, but the spindle hub is a motor itself which can be used for some different projects, and many of the other pieces can as well. Hey, if you've come up with some other creative uses for the parts from a hard drive, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed-in DIY to come.